Hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a recent Law & Order SVU episode that came out. I saw these clips on X, you may have seen them as well, where a white woman was graped, and that's the word I'll have to use, by a black man, right? And she doesn't want him to be prosecuted, she doesn't want to identify him because he's black. And she has white privilege. So he should walk free. At first when I saw this clip, I was thinking, okay, that has to be a skit. Come on, that has to be a skit, that can't be real. It's real, it's a real episode. And so I actually watched the entire episode, it is season 25, episode two, in case you're curious. And so I'm gonna review that episode for you today. But before we begin, please make sure you are subscribed and have hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. So in case you haven't seen this clip, I will play it for you. Natalie, Jay Watson raped you. And this is your chance to do something about it. I'm going to. Believe me, because I can, I can afford therapy. I have that luxury and maybe one day I'll be okay. But if that teenager goes to prison, he may not be ever. That is the only appropriate reaction if someone were to tell you that. That guy's face. <laughs> episode is called Truth Embargo, by the way, and I used to really like this show. I stopped watching a long time ago, so I don't know what has become of it. This is just one episode. I was genuinely curious to see how they were going to portray this character. Is she actually the good guy for being so, you know, empathetic to this poor teen who literally committed the crime? Or are the rest of the characters going to understand that this is insanity. So there is this lesbian couple, okay? There's Natalie, the victim, and there is Brooke, her girlfriend. Natalie goes shopping. She is trying on a bathing suit and suddenly there are these looters that enter the mall and they start stealing things. Uh, they start live streaming it. A lot of them are masked and a lot of them are teenagers. And so we see that one of the looters is actually a black male who goes and grapes Natalie. Now, when the detectives find her, they take her to the hospital and they, you know, ask her, okay, we need you to describe this man to us. What did he look like? And she refuses. She says that she did not see him. So she doesn't want to tell the detectives the race and they go and look at the security cameras and they actually see that before he committed the crime, he took off his mask and Natalie obviously saw him. So she would know his race. She would know what he looked like. So the criminal's friend who was live streaming the looting, he is brought in and his name is Travis Butler. And he was asked why he took part in this looting, why he did what he did. And he says, I needed to put food on the table. Right, but nowadays a lot of people would hear that and say, yeah, poor you. I totally get why you would need to loot Prada, go into Versace, you know, go to the Apple store because you don't have food. And that's why you're stealing luxury items. We should let them. It's because of the system. So I'm glad that this uh, detective is not completely brain dead and understands that this is ridiculous what this guy is saying. So he doesn't buy it, thankfully. So later on, the detectives go back to the victim and they show her some photos of the criminals and ask her, hey, do you know which one it is? And again, she refuses to identify him and they confront her and they say, actually, we saw the security footage. We know that you saw his face. Why aren't you telling us? And she still refuses to identify him. But then suddenly the looters actually go to the precinct and start causing trouble. And one of the female cops starts to take out her weapon. And the main character, the detective goes, put that down, put that down. They're just kids. Someone could get hurt. The looters are literally in your building that did what they did at the store to the woman, to the victim that you're investigating the case of. And now you're saying they're just teens. They're not just teens. They're teenage criminals. Someone could get hurt. Yeah, someone could get hurt. That's why take out the weapon. That's why you should have a weapon. So later on, Travis is there. This is the other guy who was live streaming this. And he ends up confessing that he does know the guy and his name is Jay Watson. So they bring him in. So the woman was still saying she didn't get a good look, but then during the lineup, she sees him and she, you know, starts to almost cry. She gets emotional and she goes, yeah, that's him. That's number three. That's the guy. And the guy's lawyer, who's also black, who brings up, you know, white guilt later on. Well, I am glad that you were able to unburden yourself, Ms. Ross. But white guilt cannot and should not dictate my client's actual guilt. Objection. Sustained. I made a mistake. 
There are so many people in prison who don't deserve to be. He wants to use the race card during court. And they actually bring up the liner from the bathing suit and they see that it was his DNA. So they know it's him. And she was talking about, the detective I think, was talking about the brutality that took place, you know, the crime. And the lawyer goes, well, police brutality is a thing. Bravo. Okay, yeah, you know, so then he didn't commit the crime. You mentioned the word brutality before. Police have their own form of brutality, don't they? Objection. Withdrawn. <laughs> I can't, I can't. And the detectives notice that they're both very upset and they go to the girlfriend, Brooke, and she goes, well, last night we were just, we were really, really worried about what was going to happen to the criminal. Not to what happened to her girlfriend. How are you holding up? Uh, not great. I was up all night with Natalie. She was inconsolable. That's understandable. Look, when a person goes through a trauma like that, um, it can end up in a very vulnerable state. Yeah, it wasn't about that. Okay, then what? I guess you could make the argument, oh, what happened to Natalie? This might be some weird psychological response to her trauma that now she's worried about her attacker. This is something else, because even the girlfriend has this illness. This is a very common illness nowadays. It's called wokeism. A lot of people do suffer from it, and we can tell that's what's going on here, because this is what she said. I'll give you the exact quote. We are acutely aware of the systemic inequities that exist within the criminal justice system. You know, that's great, but I can't help but wonder, instead of trying to comfort them, instead of talking about their recovery, you spend the night worrying about the criminal that did that to them. We're acutely aware of the systemic inequities that exist within the criminal justice system. You mean for people like Jay? Yeah. Our concern is that he might not receive a fair trial. I can't deny that there's a history of racial bias. It's certainly not a perfect system. How do you do this every day? They're very concerned about him getting a fair trial because of racial injustice, right? Because of the system. And when she went quiet during the hearing, when she was asked, can you identify him in the room? You know, we later hear from her that it, she was quiet because she saw that, you know, his jacket was too big. It was loose on him. <laughs> That's crazy. That's, and then she goes on this like rant about how, I think it was her brother or something. She wanted him to steal something from a store and it went on his record. Now she just can't bear to see this guy go to prison. Natalie, whoa. What you're talking about is apples and oranges. Not for Eves. He had a record, which only further pushed him down a path in the opposite direction of reform. How can you justify that? We can't. We can't. She goes to the detectives and she talks about how she can afford therapy because, you know, she has white privilege, but he's just a teen and he's black because he'll have a record. Yeah, that's what happens if you commit crimes. This whole thing was like watching a very, very frustrating skit. Like, there were just moments here, and I know this is a very serious topic, but the way that she's responding, like, you can't help but chuckle because of how insane the things she's saying are. The detective talks to her in the bathroom and she says, you know, you can't go into the other extreme. I, I understand your concern. This guy's very obviously guilty. He has to pay for what he did. And you can see the exact moment, she kind of rolls her eyes. She just gets pissed off because this doesn't go along with her narrative, the messed up narrative in her mind, where I guess she thinks that, you know, because someone committed a crime, if they're black, then they should be able to get away with it. Saw a chance to victimize you and he took it. You know, I have a lot of admiration for you. Then later on in court, she does identify him. Then because of the DNA and everything, Jay changes his mind and is now pleading guilty. And he goes to talk to the male detective. And he says, you know, I never really got much attention. He's, he's playing the victim. Go ahead, Jay. That girl, Natalie, I did what she said. She ain't lying. It was just supposed to be a robbery. But when I saw her, my whole life, nobody paid attention to anything I did. Not at home, not at school. Always felt kind of invisible, you know? So why would this be any different? Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. I thought this would just be, you know, something that no one paid attention to. Oh, boo-hoo. I would love to see Jay's reaction 
when he's in prison, because, you know, things happen in male prisons. If someone went to him, a man, and said, what's about to happen here? It's because I didn't get enough hugs and kisses as a kid. It's because of racism. So that's why you should forgive me after what I'm about to do. I doubt he would appreciate that. Now you can essay people. Now you can go looting. Now you can do whatever you want because your ancestors were slaves. What if someone says, you know, I didn't get food on the table when I was a kid. We really struggled. We were poor. So when I grew up, I became a cannibal. Should we say, oh, okay, yeah, poor you. Anyone who in real life is acting like these women in the show, they need to go to a non-woke therapist. If you commit these sorts of crimes, doesn't matter if you're white or black, a man or a woman, if you're acting like an animal, you get treated like an animal. You get locked in your cage along with other animals. If you do the crime, you do the time, okay? Okay, I would love to hear your thoughts about this, so make sure you comment below. Also like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.